Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Jane Austen July video. Today I'm going to be telling you about some amazing YouTube web series that are adaptations of Jane Austen novels. So, I really enjoy a modern retelling of Jane Austen. And one of my favourite forms for a modern retelling of Jane Austen is a YouTube web series. There are quite a few of these, and there are quite a few amazing ones of these, uh, which I absolutely love. I think they're really, really good fun. I think there's something very entertaining and fun about adapting a Jane Austen storyline into the modern world, and a lot of them can work quite well in a modern setting. And for some reason, I think the YouTube web series format just works really well for me. I think it's partly because, in general, I have quite a short attention span, um, and things that have ever episodes of like six to ten minutes are perfect for me. I really, really enjoy that, um, which is what most of the things I'm going to be talking about today have. Um, and also I think because Jane Austen is a little bit silly and most of these web series are a little bit silly um, and take the mick out themselves a bit and just are, you know, filled with a sense of fun, I really enjoy that um, and I think that seems very true to Jane Austen to me. So um, there are six web series that I want to talk to you about today that I have watched and that I really enjoy, um, one for each of Jane Austen's six novels and then there are a couple of like other related video things I want to talk about um, and also some Jane Austen web series that I would like to watch in the future. So I'm going to go in the order um, that I first watched them. So we're going to start off with the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. So the Lizzie Bennet Diaries was made by a company called Pemberley Digital. It's probably the most famous Jane Austen web series on YouTube. It is very entertaining and very very good fun um, and basically it is a modern retelling of Pride and Prejudice following Elizabeth Bennet and um, her sisters Lydia and Jane um, and her best friend Charlotte. Lizzie is a grad student in the US. Her mother doesn't care very much about her education and wants her to get married. And in the beginning of the web series, Jane meets a doctor called Bing, who has a friend called William Darcy, um, and everything goes on from there. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries kind of started off the format, I think, um, and it's done really well, and it's very, very entertaining. The short episodes are great. Um, there's quite a lot of, like, the characters role playing um, with each other, because not all of the characters who are within the story appear on screen, so like Mrs. Bennet never appears. Um, it's good like halfway through the um, series, I think, before Mr. Darcy appears, which is really fun and very nicely done. Um, and there's a lot of like things like that. Um, but you do see a lot of Lydia and Jane and Elizabeth and Charlotte. I think it's a really good fun adaptation of Pride and Prejudice and one that I really, really recommend. I think the acting is very good. It's very entertaining. I think the Darcy and Elizabeth plotline is done really well. And there's also like a few things that they changed in a really fantastic way. Like I think the Lydia plotline, they did perfectly to update it for the modern world and the Mr. Collins um, plotline was perfect. I really really liked what they did with that bit. Um, I thought it was really really good um, and very nicely done. I would highly highly recommend it. I've watched the whole thing I think two or three times and it's really really good fun. The next one on my list, which is the next one I watched, is Emma Approved. This was made by the same people who made the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, Pemberley Digital. I love Emma Approved. It is a modern retelling adaptation of Emma um, and in this the main character Emma runs a matchmaking service. That is her job. She runs a company that matches makes people and in this company she has an assistant called Harriet and she has her business partner who's called Alex Knightley um, and then there's also an IT guy called Martin. Um, you can see where everything's going here and obviously various characters are people that she's trying to match make. The kind of beginning um, plot line of Emma approved is her matchmaking and um, the people who equate to the westerns in Emma and then all the other characters from Emma turn up and um, either sort of being connected to Emma or being people who are her clients who she is trying to match make um, with other people. I love Emma Approved. Um, I think it's probably my favourite or it might be my joint favourite. In my opinion Emma Approved is the best objectively though there is another one I love a lot which we'll talk about in a minute um, but in my opinion I think Emma Approved is objectively the best. It has fantastic production quality, amazing acting and it's just a really perfect adaptation of Emma and I think Emma is one of those books that adapts wonderfully um, in general but also to the modern world partly because of the kind of character who Emma is um, and I also think like because Emma is very vain and um, 
a bit of a show off. It's so believable that Emma would have a YouTube channel um, and would like document other people and film other people without their knowledge because um, that's one of the things that you kind of have to get over in a lot of these web series. The idea is that this main character is making a video diary and putting it on YouTube and often they are videoing people who don't know they're being videoed or who maybe wouldn't talk or say what they're saying if they knew they were being videoed um, and sometimes you just have to suspend your disbelief a bit but with Emma I feel like you could just believe it because of the kind of character she is. I also think just all of the acting is done so well. The actors who play um, Harriet Smith and Alex Knightley and Matty Bates as well as the actress that plays Emma herself they're all fantastic. It's so well acted, it's really really well done, it's such good fun and I just find it so believable like I think it's such a good adaptation of Emma and such a good interpretation of Emma and there's so many like little little things that are updated in a really really wonderful way. It is such a wonderful adaptation of Emma and I love it so much. I've watched this again I think two or three times and I just adore it. I just think it's absolutely fantastic and like I said I think the production quality and the kind of believability elements of it are just perfect. Um, I think it is the most like credible of all the Jane Austen adaptations and I just I just adore it. I think it's truly truly wonderful. The next one I want to mention is Northbound. This is a wonderful YouTube web series adaptation of Northanger Abbey made by Oh For Cute Productions following a young woman called Kat who is going to university. She's going to be living with some family friends, the Allens, um, and we follow her in her kind of first year of university or college I suppose. She's in America and um, meeting lots of different people including Henry Tilney of course um, and then also her elder sister Jamie turns up in the neighbourhood because she, I think she's got a job there and also because her new girlfriend Isabella I would think goes to the same college as Kat and then Kat's um, literature professor is um, Henry Tilney's father. Yeah, it's really really good fun. It works really really well. I would highly recommend like going and watching the first video and seeing what you think of it because the first video is set up like a booktube video which is really really fun um, and then we go on and see the whole plot um, and everything carries on from there. It's really really good fun. I really like what they did with it. I think the interpretation of Isabella Thorpe is really great um, and I really like Henry Tilney. Like the actor who plays Henry is just brilliant um, and his relationship with Kat is done really really well. There's so many great things in Northbound and I really really like it. I think it's really well done and really nice and just a thoroughly enjoyable watch so I would highly highly recommend it. The next one I want to mention is from Mansfield with Love. This is the other YouTube web series that I would say is joint my favourite with Emma Approved. I think the production quality in Emma Approved is probably better but from Mansfield with Love has such a place in my heart and I think it's so lovely and just really really wonderful. From Answered With Love is a YouTube web series made by Foot In The Door Theatre. It is a YouTube web series adaptation of Mansfield Park. It is the only screen adaptation I've ever seen of Mansfield Park that I think gets it. Every time I watch a film or a television adaptation of Mansfield Park I just think it's not right and it just doesn't get the books for me at all or get the characters at all and From Mansfield With Love does and I'm so pleased with it because that's the only time I've ever experienced Mansfield Park on screen in a brilliant way um, and it's so good. So the basic setup of the series is that Frankie Price is making videos for her brother Will. Um, her brother Will is in the Navy and away all the time and Frankie um, works in a hotel where she's a cleaner um, and so they don't get to see each other very much so she's sending him video um, messages telling him about her life. Um, so she works at this hotel called Mansfield um, which is a family run hotel and because she's worked there for a long time she also knows the family very well. The family being um, the equivalent of the Bertrams in the book so Edmund, Tom, um, Julia and Mariah. So they all kind of live there and she works there and there's that separation between them. Mrs Norris is um, the like manager um, so she is Frankie's boss and then she also knows Mr and Mrs Bertram who run the hotel quite well. And at the beginning of the web series um, two new people show up, um, Henry and Mary Crawford, who are there to kind of like remodel the hotel um, and do it up basically. They're sort of architects um, and that's what they're there to do. And then we also meet um, Rory Rushworth who um, is Mariah's boyfriend um, whose mother also owns a big chain of hotels so that would be like an alliance of hotels. Um, yeah, it's so good. I love it so much. I love it, like I said, because I think it's the only screen adaptation I've ever seen that gets Mansfield Park. I love it because I think it properly gets Fanny's character, Frankie, in this adaptation so well. 
I think the Crawfords are brilliant. I think Edmund, or Ed as he is most of the time, is just fantastic. Um, and I really like Mariah and um, Rory Rushworth's relationship as well. That's done really, really well. Um, and just everything in it is so brilliantly done and really, really wonderful. I just think it's so great and it's so like satisfying and I was so, so emotionally invested in it, like so emotionally invested in it. Um, so From Mansfield With Love was a couple of years ago and then um, like very recently during lockdown, they uploaded like a new episode called From Lockdown With Love where they just had like all of the characters checking in with each other and how they were getting on in lockdown and it made me cry. I was just like so excited to see it back. It made me so happy. It was so good. Um, yeah, I was very, very emotionally invested in Mansfield with Love. Mansfield Park is my second favourite Jane Austen book after Pride and Prejudice and I love it so much and it's so underrated um, and it's so like, I don't know, so many people dislike it and so many people don't get it and to see that YouTube web series that just got it completely just made me so utterly delighted. I will say, please, if you go and watch it, give it a few episodes to get into it because um, I think in general, with all of these web series, I would say they take a little while to get into because you do have to suspend your disbelief to a certain extent. And I think as well at the beginning of From Mansfield Would Love, it's a few episodes before like the situation um, and what Frankie is doing and where she works and her relation to ev everyone else um, becomes really clear. Um, and also for the first few episodes, she doesn't seem shy. And I was like, they've got Fanny Price wrong. She's not going to be shy. And the first time you see her like on the screen with someone else, another character who isn't Ed, she's completely different. And I think that like is perfect and such a brilliant interpretation of Fanny Price because it's true in the book. And to see that in a YouTube series and how they've done that is so brilliant and so clever. So do please, please go and watch it and um, definitely give it a few episodes for you to get into it because I think it's a few episodes before you realise how amazing it is. But it's so good and I highly recommend it. The next two I want to mention are both ones I've been watching this year. So the first is Eleanor and Marianne Take Barton. Um, this is obviously a modern retelling of Sense and Sensibility. And this was made a few years ago by a student theatre group in the UK at the University of Warwick. And considering it was made by students on like clearly a low budget and just in their like university bedrooms and kitchens. It's really, really good. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's very silly um, and I think out of all of them it is maybe the silliest like I think you have to suspend your disbelief the most at times but I also thoroughly enjoyed it and just got so emotionally invested and I think the acting and the characterization is done so well and I love the interpretation of various characters and I think the relationship between Eleanor and Marianne is done brilliantly and um, so this is set at a university Marianne has just started her first year and she decides to create a video blog about her life and um, a video diary that she's going to put on the internet she tries to get her sister Eleanor involved but Eleanor doesn't really want to be involved that much. And then we also meet the people who live on Marianne's corridor, um, including Lucy Steele, um, who is not the nicest, um, Edward, who lives down the corridor, who is of course Edward Ferris, um, and also Charlotte, who is sort of like Charlotte Palmer cross with Mrs Jennings. Like at first I thought she was just Charlotte Palmer, which I thought was an interesting decision because Charlotte Palmer's not that big a character in the book, but I think as it goes through she is a cross between Charlotte Palmer and Mrs Jennings, and actually she's a brilliant addition because I don't think that she would necessarily be your first like pick of oh we need another character from Marianne to talk to from Sense Sensibility in this modern adaptation who should we bring um I'm not sure that you would immediately think Charlotte Palmer slash Mrs Jennings combo but actually works really brilliantly um, and I really really like it I think I think she's a really great character um, and I like how she grows and like Mrs Jennings like Charlotte she's a bit silly she talks too much but her heart's also in the right place which I really liked um, and then Charlotte has a brother called Brandon who is um, a PhD student who was also one of Marianne's seminar leaders so that's obviously the Colonel Brandon figure and then Marianne also meets a boy um, in one of her lectures called Will who is obviously the Willoughby figure. It's so great I really thoroughly enjoyed it it was really really good fun and um, really entertaining and um, cleverly done. I thought the relationship between Marianne and Eleanor was done really really well um, and I think there were some really lovely bits of characterization. I think Brandon and Edward were really good and like there's a really fantastic episode where 
Marianne um, is trying to act out to her video diary what happened the first time she met Will um, but she tries to get Edward to act it with her so you're sort of both in this episode learning about um, the relationship between Marianne and Will and how it's developing but you're also seeing how like awkward Edward is and how much he's really uncomfortable doing this so you're learning about his character too and um, so there's lots of little fun things like that um, and it's really good fun I would really recommend it and I think again because Marianne is a slightly over the top character in the book yes she's a slightly over the top character in this web series too but that works and it also makes the her uploading videos about her life to the internet thing more believable too I also really really loved what they did with the Lucy Steele plot line because I think it needs updating in some way and the way they updated it I think worked really well like that plot line the Lucy plot line in the modern world like it just doesn't work without Regency um, norms and values and ideals um, and social context however what they did in Eleanor and Marianne Tate Barton worked really really well so I thoroughly enjoyed that and I would definitely recommend it the next one I want to mention is Rational Creatures this is a adaptation of Persuasion now this is currently unfinished there are only six episodes of it and um, that's their season one but I think they just got funding a few months ago to make season two um, just before lockdown so I imagine they can't film right now but hopefully there will be more of it in the future which I'm very much looking forward to because it's very very good and, and please do go and watch them and give them support because they obviously like need need it um to keep going but this is a wonderful adaptation modern adaptation of persuasion I would say this might actually have the like highest production quality out of all of these it's really beautifully shot on film the music is lovely um, and it's really like nicely cut and edited this is slightly different from the other five in that this is the only one which is not pretending to be YouTube videos like this is just a screen adaptation that happens to be in short episodes all the rest the like main character is making a YouTube video or making videos in some way and um, for a purpose like that's the um, construct in all the rest of them but that's not the case in Rational Creatures um, and this is a modern retelling of Persuasion. We're following Anna, she works for her dad but her dad's business is failing so he can't afford to pay her this year so she goes to stay with her sister Marisol and uh, Marisol's partner Charlie but then she also discovers that um, Charlie and Marisol's downstairs neighbour is Sophie Wentworth whose brother Fred Wentworth, Anna's ex-boyfriend from high school has come to stay with recently and then obviously she meets Fred again but then also Charlie's brother Lewis um, lives nearby with his roommate Ben Wick <laughs> so fun um, who is also potentially romantically interested in Fred Wentworth and Fred Wentworth is like a famous travel writer and he's so good I can't wait for them to make the rest of it because I really want to watch the rest of it there are so many things I like about it one is just that it's a really beautifully like looking and sounding adaptation the music is really really good and really nicely done um, and it feels very like filmatic cinematic you know what I mean it's really great um that stuff is really good I also think it's very well acted um and I also really like that they have done some gender swapping um to create some LGBTQ relationships you know so Charlie Marisol's partner um rather than being Charles Musgrove is um female Charlie um, and then Louisa Musgrove has become Lewis who is romantically interested in um Fred Wentworth and we're not sure whether or not he might be romantically interested in Lewis back or not um, so yeah at least like four on possibly five possibly six there were some hints um, of the main characters are gay or bisexual and um, so that's really cool and yeah it's just so good I can't wait for them to make more because I think it's gonna just be amazing when it's finished um, and I really hope it does continue so yeah please go and show that some love as well so those are the six Jane Austen web series that I wanted to mention there are two other things that I want to mention and um, one is that Tilly from Tilly Shelf who is a booktuber has been making some amazing Jane Austen role-playing acting content it's not quite a full like web series Jane Austen retelling but last year in Jane Austen July she made some videos as Emma talking about her reading plans and this year she's been doing the um Udolpho vlogs in the style of Catherine Morland reading um the mysteries of Udolpho and talking about her life um, and everything that's been going on in Bath and it's so amazing it's so good I really just would like Tilly to make a whole web series of Northanger Abbey please um it's really really good they're really really good fun and if you enjoy a Jane Austen web series you will definitely enjoy Tilly's videos in the style of Catherine Morland about the mysteries of Udolpho and everything else because it's so fun and I love it it's so good it's so good you need to go watch it um, another thing I wanted to mention which I've just started watching is the Jane games this I have such mixed feelings about um, 
This is a Jane Austen inspired web series in the form of a fake reality TV show with six Jane Austen characters competing to try and find a love interest um, and also get lots of money. It's very weird, it's very fun, but I have criticisms of some of the interpretation of the characters. Like, I don't know what they've done with Marianne without it's not Marianne. Lizzie Bennet and Catherine Morland, I really like their interpretations, but everyone else I feel very dubious about. It's bonkers and it's weird. It's very, very heightened. All the characters are sort of pushed to extremes. Um, it's very silly. I don't know that I'm going to agree with all of the interpretation of all the characters, but it's also quite fun and bonkers and full of a love of Jane Austen. So I'm gonna see what it's like. Then finally there are a couple of other um, web series I would like to watch in the future. I hear very good things about the Kate Morland Chronicles which is another Northanger Abbey adaptation and there's also a project Dashwood which is another Sense of Sensibility adaptation which I think I started watching ages ago um, and only watched a couple of episodes of and never finished but I'd like to try that again especially as um, because I said these I think in general take a few episodes to properly get into them um, and then lastly there is somewhere an adaptation of Emma which is an LGBTQ retelling where the character of Mr Knightley is a woman and I watched the first episode once and I can't find it I really really want to watch one of it and I just can't find it and I tried really hard I searched I googled I couldn't find it so if anyone knows what that Emma web series is please tell me and please send me the link and it'll tell me where it is and what it's called also, if you have any other recommendations for me of literary web series, whether they are adaptations of Jane Austen books or other classics uh, especially, I would love that a lot because I really, really like them um, and yeah, I would like to see more. So yeah, I think that's all for today. Please let me know down in the comments if you enjoy a Jane Austen web series. I love these. I love these so much. They're such good fun, so silly and so wonderful and a really lovely way of experiencing a Jane Austen story in a different way. So I hope you enjoy some of the ones I've mentioned today and that you go and check them out if you haven't seen them. Um, and that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.